All right, let's go ahead and hop into it. I think we can all start with this one single person because I think we all got stuff. Let's go ahead and hop into Luka. Yeah, um, Luka Doncic, what to say? Okay, so Luka Doncic, I don't want to hear anybody say anything about him being a top five player in the NBA. If you have talked about him as an NBA player, you better talk about him as an offensive player only. In the same realm, you do James Harden. Because the only time he stopped somebody yesterday was, uh, or their, 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 their most previous game, was uh, Paul George, who, we, who was missing layups in his straight boo-boo right now. Like, he stopped him and getting to the rim on, like, two possessions. So, like, when you're stopping Paul George right now, and that's it, you can't do nothing. So, I don't want to hear nobody, like, people are, people say, James Harden isn't the best player in the NBA purely based off of his defense, right? He, that's been his, that's been the, the narrative around him for years. You can't, you have to keep Luka Doncic in the exact same light. He is never going to be that. He's not nowhere near a top five player in the NBA. But offensively, specifically, offensively, he is upper echelon. But anybody who says a top five player is literally, or anybody who says he's an all-time, or all-time, uh, a top five player overall right now is uh, falling into the hype, I, I think. All right. So with that being said, who who you got over? Like, who's your five that's over Luka? Like, where are you? Where would you put him right now? Kawhi, LeBron, Giannis. Uh, I'm trying to think of who. Uh, Right now, honestly, James Harden. Honestly, still, still James Harden. Um, I'm trying to think whoever's in the playoffs. Uh, I take him over Jimmy Butler. Uh, um, I take him over Chris Paul. Uh, you would take him over Chris Paul, bro. I, 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 I think you, you would take him over Chris Paul. I would take him over Chris Paul because Chris Paul is like an all time leader, but he ain't led nobody to no wins. Like, whatever. Uh, so I take him over Chris Paul. Who, 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 who. I take? I don't think I take him over Westbrook though. I, I can see West- why you wouldn't, but like I, I think I think you gotta have like a certain team to really. Get I know, but like Westbrook. them as players, twenty twenty <laughs> non quad injury Westbrook. I would take Westbrook mm-hmm. over uh, Luca right now. Uh, I would take Luca over Victor Oladipo, obviously. Uh, who was in the playoffs? Uh, obviously Paul George because we should. We should Donovan be. Mitchell, huh? Donovan Mitchell. I don't know. I I think I would take Donovan Mitchell over him because Don, Donovan Mitchell is a two way. No, no, that's not. I don't know. I definitely would take Donovan Mitchell over him, and I would take uh Murray over him also. Jamal Murray. Murray? Oh. Are you sure? Yes, because look, what so Murray is a basketball player, right? So he does offense and defense. Like, defensively, he will guard your best player as lo- along with dropping 50 all of a sudden. Like, am I the only one shocked by him dropping 50 and all that kind of stuff? But whatever. But like, he's dropping 50, and he's also being your player player or being up the best player on the opposite team. Luka is going to, you know, pass. and he, The only thing he's going to do better than him is rebound and pass. And that's only because his team doesn't allow – or Murray's team – on Murray's team, he doesn't need to do that because they have Jokic doing the passing for everybody else. Right. So, like, that's not his role. But also, like, but like, I want a player that you, a top player in the league to me automatically plays offense and defense automatically. That's why, in my mind, James Harden's never been like a top player to me. He's been a top offensive player, but he's never been a top player to me because he don't play no defense. Can he? I don't know because he never do. Luca. He's slow on offense, but effective because he's skilled. On defense, he's slow, and he's just slow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't translate into, like, a – like, you can be skilled. You, like, on defense, if you're slow, it doesn't – it won't – you won't be a great defender just because your feet work, whatever it is, right? It, it's, like a, it's not a skill thing. It's more of an athleticism thing in terms of – or an intelligence thing. But, like, right now, I'll probably take Murray over – I would take Murray over uh, Luca. I'll take Donovan over Luca, just because they're both two-way players, and I like two-way players more than just an offensive guy. All right. So I got a question for you on the Murray thing. 
Yeah. Murray, uh, can we agree that, like, Murray is, like, the Nuggets' best defender? Mm, yeah. So what exactly does that mean? Because, like, I get that, but nobody else on that team really plays defense. Like, they don't have Gary Harris right now, who would probably be in that role if not for Murray. You can't do anything with Michael Porter Jr. What, Will Barton, is is he still getting minutes for them? Like, I don't, so they don't just, really have, like, a lot of I don't, I, I, I don't think he was in the bubble. Like, he, he hasn't been in the bubble to play. So what do you mean, like in terms of deep, like what? Like, like is he like that? He's the option. Like he's the number one defender. Like, yeah, but he's, he's not one. your number one like defender. He's like a, he wouldn't actually be your person if you had other people. He no no. He's a uh, Murray, especially when he played you know all last year whatever it is. He was known as an elite defender of guards. That's what he was known. Like he would that was like his mo. Right now he's starting to get this like. He's always been, like, a good offensive player, but now he's starting to get, like, a uh, – he's, like, that tier un, under under elite, right? Like, he's, like, really, really good, I guess, offensively. But he his M.O. was a defensive – like, a true, very, very, very good defensive player. Like, that's what he was, right? So, like, but I personally, like, every all-time great person in the league, all-time great player in the league, uh, when you talk about just all-time great overall players, has been a two-way player. And Luca, right now, even though he's 21, whatever, and he's already he's already getting compared to the all-time uh, the all-time greats. Like for some reason, they're already passing him past like the all-time European greats, right? Even though Dirk exists and is like a top 10 scorer of all time or whatever, but like they're already he's they're already for some reason like surpassing him. In the, in, the, in the realm of the, the, the Dirks and the Ginobili's and the Kukoc's and all kind of stuff, right? They're like, he's, he, he's going to be an all-time great player. And in my mind, and I've thought about this for a while because I don't want to come off as like a Luka hater because, mm-hmm. yeah, I just don't want to come off as a Luka hater. But offensively, he is phenomenal. Like, offensively, he's smart, skilled. He, well, he's smart and skilled. That's how he's scored all his points and that's how he gets all his assists. But... To be an all-time great player, you have to be able to play defense, and he can't play defense. He's like Steve Nash, except 6'8", and plays point guard. Does that make sense? I get that, but as long as you're 6'8", you can, you can do something. Like, you, I mean, you, you will always be serviceable at 6'8". You say, um, yeah, you, you can do something, but did you watch the game? I think I, I only caught, like, the second half. Yeah, no, he's not even doing. He's not. He's not doing serviceable, but it's like smoking mirrors because offensively, he's doing all these different things, right? Like the balls, he's touching the ball every possession. He's oh, he's he did all this on a whatever ankle, you know what I mean? But like, so all that is like like he's destroying offensively. Anything offensive in the game, he is destroying. But then there's two parts of the game. In the other game, people will just, like, turn a blind, eye, a blind eye to because he's doing these things. Off- but also, I think we've been fed the agenda of defense doesn't really matter for whatever reason. You know what I mean? Like, but even though, like, in my opinion, like, in my opinion, Kawhi's the best player in the NBA. But you, you could say Kawhi. You could say uh, Giannis. I don't know what say Giannis. I can't shoot a three. But you could say Kawhi or you could say, like, LeBron, right? And they both – for the careers, except LeBron, he got older in like the last two years in Los Angeles, played offense and defense, which made him the best players automatically. You know what I mean? You think of all-time great players, all great offense, great defense. Um, but also, I was, I was, like, speaking of the defense, I was watching this, I was watching the game, and I thought it was interesting that, first of all, Reggie Jackson should not be in the league. Uh, <laughs> if, if Lance Stevenson is not in the league, Ray Jackson should not be in the league. I don't know how he, I don't know how he's playing. Like when he was Oklahoma City, somehow he somehow he bamboozled the uh, the Detroit Pistons GM to make to, to to make him believe that he's a starting point guard. That's just a bad organization, bro. We we let that slide. <laughs> but in fairness to him, though, like right before he signed with them, wasn't it like a series like a series or two in the playoffs? He just like showed out. 
Yeah. You, I mean, you know, it, it, you're absolutely right. There was like a series two where he just like did his thing, but it was a series or two. You watch his whole career before then, he's been like a serviceable player, right? And then, is that again, Calvin? No, it's just like I think with, with um, the Pistons, it's like you look at that and you look at the fact because like he was there after um, Harden had already left. Mm-hmm. And like that's more or less what Harden was. He he was kind of like the dude who comes off the bench, some offense, plays good defense, yeah. and whatever. And then like he goes to Houston and plays out of his mind. And then like and like so clearly that so like you look at Jackson and like maybe Jackson could be that too. And like he wasn't like he wasn't quite like he was four man version of it. But like it's it, it's it's under. Understandable in hindsight, even if like, I mean, yeah. I'm, like whoever the GM was at the time needs to never be a GM again. If he's a GM right now, he needs to be fired just based off the contract he gave Reddy Jackson. But that's not even the point. Like <laughs> Jackson's Reddy Jackson's cheeks. But <laughs> when so the game was happening, Luca's doing his thing, whatever it is, right? All of a sudden, you know, they they, they come back from twenty points down. Paul George. It was like two of eight or something like that. It was something nuts. It was, uh, and one was a layup, and the other one was a three. Like, like I was like, oh, this is – so you're the reason – he's the reason Melo couldn't be in the league because everybody played Melo, and it was really – it was really a pandemic uh, playoff peak. That's who it really was. But, like, I, I, I digress. Um, but then I was watching it, and Reggie Jackson, since Patrick Beverly's not playing, also if Patrick Beverly played – they would have won the game easy, easily because Patrick Beverly like automatically brings the intensity up. But they were they're playing, they were going to the game, whatever it is. And Rudy Jackson was gone. Luca, Luca, killing this guy, just slow crossover, step back, high. You know what I mean? This slow, methodical, killing this guy. And I'm over here like, oh, okay, like they're coming back. They came back, passed them. This Todd game is you know it's it's flip flopping back and forth. And then, cool. And then. <laughs> Kawhi pointed to Luka. He, he literally pointed to him. And all of a sudden, I was like, okay, okay, so what's going now? Next possession, Kawhi guards Luka. Luka scores zero points on, like, six straight possessions. No assists, nothing. Kawhi was really shutting this man down. But then going back and out of – and hitting, hitting crazy mid-range shots. Out of 12 mid-range shots he took. He missed two the entire game. And they were just contested, like, fade away. Like, but, like, there was a point where he hit four of them in a row. Like, he was just guarding Luka, boom, boom, came back, scored. Guarding Luka, boom, boom. It was, it, was, it was incredible to watch. And then when they when, the, when Luka, I, guess, I don't know if the coach called it, I don't know if Luka called it, but he wasn't doing nothing. So all of a sudden, the game started going more to the Clippers' favor. And then Luka started, they started doing a pick and roll. To where they're forcing Reggie Jackson back on uh on, on Luca, and I'm sitting there like, oh, I mean, smart basketball, absolutely smart basketball. But I'm like, Doc, you gotta do something, like put somebody else in, shepherd somebody in to make the Reggie Jackson get off the floor. And then what happened? Luca did the switch again, hit that step back. Awesome. And Reggie, if you watch, Reggie Jackson was nowhere near him. Like, it was the slowest step back, but Reggie Jackson's footwork is so slow, he was nowhere near him. And I was like, I knew it was going in. I knew it was going in. Luca, Luca Loki had him stumbling before he even went stumbling. to the step back. Stumbling. How did fall for that hezzy, bro? That hezzy? Look at all hezzies. How Luca's ankles hurting, and then he made your ankles hurt. Like, I don't. Randy Jackson will be forever remembered in Luka Doncic highlights because you know that's going to be there. That's going to be there for the rest of his career. No, that step back is going to be there for the rest of his career. And he yeah, yeah. that looks stupid, bro. Dude, but here's what's unfortunate. Here's what's really unfortunate about this. Like, here's what's unfortunate about it. My bad. Here's what's unfortunate about it. Um, huh. If that was in, I don't know what the arena called in Dallas. What's the what's, what's arena called? Uh, American Airlines. If that was the airlines, right? That would be like a that would be like a crazy moment, blah blah blah, game winner, whatever it is. It like that would, but I don't know if it it wouldn't be 
Dame Lillard level because Dame Lillard his 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 step backs to knock people out the playoffs and waves to him like that's that's the wildest I've ever seen in my life. It wouldn't be that level, but it would it would have been the tier under that, and okay. that would have been like I feel bad. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad for nobody rich, but I'm like <laughs> I'm symbolically I symbolically feel bad for this guy having to do that, and only his teammates were you know. Hey, like I don't know how loud it is in the gym, but only is in, in virtual fans doing this. You know what I mean? Because like if that was in like the American Airlines arena, that'd have been nuts. Bro, I was editing an article while I was watching that. Almost flipped my computer over. Oh, that was. I got so hyped. I got so hyped. Dude, hit him with I that. Was like, Let's That's... go. <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to come off as a looking hater though. But like, but like. You have to talk about Luca as an offensive player only, not not a defensive player. You have to. Like, if you do that for James Harden, you gotta do it for Luca too. 